Um, a new hire in the initial employment of an individual to a position in state government. Please note that says initial appointment to a position in state government. Um, well, let me put a step back. We've got um, an action guide for each one of these. If you'll pull out your action guide for new hire action, I'm not going to read this to you, but I am going to hit the highlights. Um, these action guides we develop to help you figure out if this is the right action code. We'll have references to, well, if it's this situation, you may need to look at a different action code. So just to kind of walk you through these new action guides that we have. I think they'll be helpful in helping you determine if it's the correct action code or not. But what I'm going to do is go over the key points um, to help you determine when a new hire is a new hire. Basically, being in the beacon, sy beacon system, um, just because an individual doesn't have a beacon personnel number doesn't mean they're not a state employee. Okay? We've got a lot of state agencies um, and universities that don't participate in beacon. They don't input their data in beacon. In fact, there are um, only one university program, what is NC School of Science and Math. Yeah, and they're here. Poof. They're the only university program right now that is actually um, participating in Beacon. All the rest of them have what they call a banner, a whole different system. Banner system is what their payroll system, personnel payroll system is. So those people are state employees, but they're not in our system. So we don't treat them as new hires, okay? So if anybody's transferring from what we call a non-Beacon agency, um, non-Beacon agencies or any state agency that's not participating in the beacon system. They are not new hires. New hires are people that are not in any kind of state agency right now. It would be like with a private industry, someone transferring from Progress Energy or, um, you know, mom and pop soda shop, you know, whatever. It's, it's not a state agency, it's a new hire. If it's from one of the public school systems, it's a new hire. If it's from a local government, agency it's a new hire if it's from the community colleges any of the community colleges and when i say community colleges i'm not talking about the central community college office those are state employees as far as in the business system being state employees but when i say community colleges i mean each individual college itself like lake tech community college johnston community college those colleges are separate by statute and in our system. So those would be new hires in the system. Any questions so far? Now, if you don't know if an, um, if an employer is um, a state agency or not, we have on our OSP website under the longevity policy section a link. I don't know if you've ever looked at our, on our online policy, but there's a link on the longevity policy of a resource list over on the right side. On that is a list of credible service agencies, okay? That listing will show you, and we've got it identified as different columns. We've got the agency name or the employer name. We've got um, a category of whether it's a state agency, a state university, a community college, a public school system, or um, Anything that we give credible service for for longevity is on that list. So anytime you have an employer and you're not sure if it's a state agency or not, you can go to that list and it should help you determine if it is a state agency or a state university that we would if would not treat as a new hire. Has anybody used that tool or seen it? Did you know it was out there? We've gotten a lot of good positive feedback about that. That's been helpful. Because the key to, key to this is knowing what's a state agency and what isn't. And a lot of people don't know that, you know, Central Regional Hospital under DHHS is, you know, a state agency or is Duke University a state university or not. You know, some people don't know what our state universities are or, or what our hospitals are state hospitals, which ones are state, which ones are private. So that list helps you work through that. Anytime you have um, an employer that in question that's not on the list, you need to call state personnel. So in other words, if an employee is saying, oh, I'm transferring from this state agency, and you go and it's not on the list, you need to call us to verify if it is a state. But the employees don't know. I know you find that hard to believe, but employees don't know what a state agency <laughs> is. 
or not. They'll say, oh, I'm, I'm in the retirement system, or the retirement system gave me credit for that, so you should give me credit for that. That's not true. Retirement system gives credit for stuff we do not under our policy. Retirement system is a totally different policy than the state personnel policy is as far as creditable service and what is a state agency, not a state agency. So the purpose of that list is to clarify all of that. But this list you can go to and see what is a state agency and what is a state university. We've got them all listed out individually. <clears throat> Any questions so far? That were a point. You may get you may get to this, but and if you're going to cover it later, tell me how I'll be, set up. I'll be glad. Um, what if you get an employee that they don't put their previous service with somewhere on a on their application? For example, we hire in somebody from UNC Chapel Hill, and they were working in an office at UNC for the last two and a half years just till they could find a job in their field, but then they finally found a job in, as, a, as a data records manager, and so now they're gonna come work for us. They don't put that on their application because, well, that wasn't pertinent. So they don't, we don't have any clue. I run a PMIS report, I run a, a, an actions report, a credit service report, vegan, and it doesn't pick this person up. Yeah, that'll happen. What? Do, we, yeah. do we put them in as a new hire and then do a creditable service? Aggregate service form to correct it? Uh, well, no, we prefer you not to do that. <laughs> we prefer you to verify it before you put them in the system. Right, but if I can't well, find them anywhere. But um, I guess what I'm hearing you say is you find out later after the fact yeah. that it was not a new hire, it was something other well, than that. Well, how am I going to find out what they are if they don't show up in either that that PMIS, old PMIS report because nobody's putting stuff in PMIS right. anymore? and they probably went, and they were working somewhere that didn't put them in in the first place. A lot of people catch it pre-hire when they, some people do orientation before they hire employees and let them know what credible, what is and isn't. If you don't do that, you're, you're not gonna catch it until after the fact. Well, the manager's supposed to ask them, yeah. but then like you said, employees don't know. Yeah. I mean, we can't, there's not a whole lot we can do about them employees not putting on their app because we say on the application give us your entire history you know so we we assume when they feel like that application they've given us their entire history but it, they don't always so that's not something you're going to be able to catch ahead of time before you enter the action that's something we catch after the fact unless you do an orientation before they start some agencies do an orientation before they actually start but some don't they wait till the first few weeks and do it the first few days but, I mean, you, know, you have to believe that they're following instructions and giving us their entire work history when they're not always doing that. So, there's no way to stop applicants not filling so the application. So don't stress it if I run across I wouldn't those. stress it then. Okay, good. Because <laughs> it happens every now and then. You do a good faith effort, you know, to get it right based on the information they provide, and then if you find out later they did not provide all their information, you know, there's nothing you do about it, you know, ahead of time. To do the best you can, but they are supposed to fill the application out completely, and give us their entire work history, whether they feel it's pertinent or not. But they don't always do that. We do know that. Well, if, if, if they've got a whole bunch of work history somewhere, other than you know, maybe they've been working privately somewhere or something, but you know. And on a side note, PMIS is going away. <laughs> I know for those of you that still use it, you may not like that. Um, the universities were using it still up through December 31st um, of 2011, right? <laughs> Dusty, look at Dusty, confirming. Um, that was their last date. Anything with an effective date prior in prior to December 31st, 2011, is still being entered by universities, and they've got, we've given them a few months to catch all that up. Because um, we have some universities that do huge downloads into our system because they have a separate system, so it takes a while to do all of that. Um, but they're not reporting anything in PMIS during 2012 at all. So, and then eventually, we're going to totally do away with PMIS. So you can't look at it for anything because we've transferred the data that's in PMIS into VEGA. So there are reports where you should be able to access that data. And let me ask you one more question then. If we have an employee who was in PMIS 
because they worked for state government somewhere back way back when. Mm -hmm. They were not active in 2008 when we went live with Beacon, and their data did not transfer. How do we find them in that system? Yeah. Your PMISBI report is how they reported that. Did everybody hear the question? I've had a couple people that I couldn't find that way. Yeah. Now, one of the problems with our system, I hear, <laughs> is if you don't type the name in exactly right, it's not going to find them. Um, we've asked, have we asked? We asked verbally. I don't know if we put it in writing. <laughs> we haven't put it in writing yet. We've asked for them to fix that problem. I don't know if you remember if PMIS has got close to the name, it would give you all the names. Mm -hmm. Well, Beacon doesn't do that. You've got to type the name in exactly right to find the person. So if you if spell it wrong or anything, you can't find them. Um, or maybe if they change their name, I don't if know. They, you can't they keep find them. Right, Mary, you can't find them, but if PMIS, right. you can type PMHIS in their social, you can get yeah. it. Yeah. So we're working with Beacon. I don't know if we've actually verbally asked for that. I think we've got to follow up with it in writing, but they are aware that that's an issue. Because we told them when PMS goes away, that's going to be a problem. Because now people, if they can't find it here, they're going to PMIS and looking, and they can find it there, and then get whatever numbers they need, and then go back and find it. So when PMIS goes away, that's going to be a problem. So we've asked the Beacon folks verbally, we haven't put it in writing yet, to see if there's a way to fix that in Beacon we can get close to the name and you know don't spell it exactly right it'll give us a list of all similar names to that so you can get hopefully the right one so we're working on some of those we're slowly working on some of those issues because um like i say we've got a time frame we're not going to do away with it immediately i mean but eventually we do have a date of doing away with pmis where you can no longer even access it it's just you how we moved all the data to I just want to clarify, uh, Ray, you said that if we have um, employment verification for an individual who worked for the state prior to Beacon, was never in the Beacon system, but was in PMIS, we can pull them up in the Beacon BI report. This should be. Yeah. Okay, so th that was uploaded. We understood that it was only people that were active in Beacon. Did everybody hear the question? She was asking if you could go into Beacon and pull up people that have never been in Beacon but were in PMIS. And there is a BI report to do that. <laughs> you cannot give us the exact number, but it's the top one in the poll. <laughs> if you have any problem accessing that, I guess they can call up. Do you want we need to show you or? Yeah. Annie will show you where it is. So this is, this is going to be very important because when PMIS goes away, this is the way you're going. And you probably need to go ahead and start practicing it and using it um, before we do away with PMIS. So I would say for now, from now on, just use BI instead of PMIS and get used to using it. And then, you know, if you can't find it, PMIS can be your backup for right now until it goes away. But that will help us know where the problems are. I was going to say, I don't think the problems are. Am I in your way? Did everyone see how I got there? You click on your reports tab, then you would click on PMIS data, and then your PMIS PA, and it's your third one, P002, PMIS employee history. New hires. We have um, three different new hire reasons. We got the regular new hire. We got National Guard, and we got um, senior. We got the firefighters. But you'll be using new hire. Is National Guard one way? Uh, no. no. Okay. But most of you will only use um, new hire. New hire. New hire. Um, DPS is the only one that uses National Guard. DPS is the only one that uses National Guard, and I guess Dana is the only one that uses pick up firefighters. Any questions before we move on? 